In 2005, you guys released Chapter 5. Uh, that is because it is the fifth album, if you're counting Tormented. So a few people were confused when it came out because, you know, they're starting with the major label debut. So this is the fourth album, right? But yeah. us, us Stain fans know what's going on. So that's Chapter yeah. 5. <laughs> And um, that featured five singles right here, Schizophrenic Conversations, Falling, Everything Changes, and King of All Excuses. So this is your third number one album. Again, it goes platinum. And right here is a massive number one hit. It, man, it, it seemed like every album you guys put out had at least one song that was like a massive number one hit that was able to carry that album and and have people go out in droves and and pick up the album um did it feel like you guys were on this streak of somehow always having this number one hit no <laughs> it didn't feel like that at the time. it was harder than it looked no it, it's just every time you have to try to better you know make it better than the last or something different than the last one and uh, you know, we did obviously come back to the roots of, of the heavy er stuff, but um, I think 14 Shades and Chapter 5 were a little bit more of the pop side of Stained. Um, there are some heavy songs on there, but the majority are, are just, you know, they're all well written uh, and it just it shows a different side of what we do. It was a lot of fun to make that record. I, I was dealing with some issues at the time, but um, um, I, I that one was fun. So yeah. you, you're talking about some of the songs were more a little softer, more melodic, showing a different side of the band. So everything changes yeah. is one of my all time favorite songs in in yeah. the in the stain. Uh, catalog um yeah. you also mentioned there's some heavier songs so falling uh, was a top 10 hit was that one of the most fun songs to play there's like you know it starts with a badass drum part and, and yeah pretty heavy that, yeah that 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 was fun to play yeah it was fun to write it was fun to play i mean uh that's a, it's a good song the video sucks but i mean <laughs> whatever I, I remember when that was a hit i remember thinking that it seemed like it was a showcase for you as the drummer. Like it put you right out front when the song starts and it, it felt like a win for you personally. That's what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. We used to open shows with that from time to time. So. Oh, we uh, get, we, sorry. We, we, that's awesome. We saw your dog for a second. So there was a sneak peek of, of, of your dog. What's your dog's name again? Briley. Bright. Okay. There you go. Riley. Riley. So if, if uh, Briley comes like back. Riley with a B in front of it. Yeah. Briley. Awesome. And I, I have uh, another legend here that has some kind words for you. So someone that knows chapter five inside and out is yeah. David Bottrell. So yeah. he, he produced that album. I believe he might've mixed it as well. Um, yeah. And if not, then I apologize. So this is what David says. He says, John is yet another one of the great drummers I've had the privilege to work with. He's the engine of the band and was a pleasure to work with. He also knows how to find unique locations to build a studio. So can you share uh, the story about the recording studio? So he mentioned he went over this story during the uh, interview I did with him. Um, yeah. There was a warehouse and you had to go through a certain type of venue to get into your studio. Can you share that? OK, no, he's so he's talking about our studio. OK, not where we recorded Chapter five, but it was our studio. It was upstairs from a strip club that's and we worst. were known as that band that had the the this the we had a studio and a, and a we had a studio on one side and then a rehearsal space on the other side and the, on the you know the bottom floor and second floor of strip club so that's what david is referring to and it, so yeah it was always fun you know having uh inviting people up and uh you know when producers would come from people would come from out of town or whatever bring you know they get all kinds of entertain <laughs> yeah he was he was saying that it was just it was memorable that you know maybe to get to certain parts of your studio or your jam space you actually had to go through the strip club i don't know if that's true but um yeah i i said you know what that doesn't sound that bad and he goes joel have you ever been to a strip club strip club during the day he goes it's not it's <laughs> not what you think so those are his comments that's funny. No, uh, yeah, you do have to walk right through it to go up, you know, either the elevator or the or the stairs. Yeah, that's too funny. So during the clip of David Bottrell and I talking about stained, um, mm -hmm. 
I, I gave you a compliment where I said, you know, I, I think that John is underrated as a drummer for how good he is and, and, and his contributions to the band. And also that you do something unique that I don't hear with many drummers is you have a way to create hooks with your drumming, especially with, with your work on the hi-hats, work on, on the cymbals. Can, yeah. can you talk about maybe where that uniqueness came because not a lot of people do that and listening back to the entire discography you know in it's been a while there's you know there's like a lot of uh, a space to move and you have this little hi-hat work that that comes in at the end of a bar and and it's it adds a hook that drummers aren't usually adding too many hooks yeah i i mean all that cymbal stuff like that kind of uh those type of accents and uh, or just embellishments and, and a part of a song. Um, you know, I, that just came from uh, trying to do something kind of just interesting there, you know, not try to do your typical fill there, just try to maybe throw something in that's a little little different. And, uh, you know, Stuart Copeland used to do that a lot with the police. And, um, uh, you know, Terry Bazio does it. He's, he's, you know, he's a solo guy, but, um, I've always liked that. I always thought it just added so much to a song and Chad actually does it. Chad's a Liga. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, it's just, I look at it. It's just part of, it's part of the drum kit. So, um, I want to use all of it, you know? I feel like if I was a drum company, that made cymbals and hi hats that you would be like my number one guy to 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 sponsor because you're you're using them more than than anyone else. Um, I play Zildjian cymbals, so I think they got it pretty. Well. Oh, just the best, just the best, you know. Yeah, they are. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So the success of the albums leading up to this point allowed you guys to tour around the world. Were there any locations that stood out to you as your favorite to visit while on tour? Hmm. I always loved Germany. Um, but Austria was beautiful. Switzerland's beautiful. I mean, that whole area up there, uh, uh, Dublin was always fun. There's too many. There's so many good ones. Uh, it's so different from being in the States, you know? So it's, it's like a culture shock when you get there. Uh, so it takes a little bit to kind of settle in, but it's, it's, it's uh it's very different from over here it's cool though it's, so, it's i want to say very different i'm sorry it's the same but there's little things that are just kind of different over there not to mention it's way older than we are <laughs> so a place that's not as exotic as the places you mentioned uh except for maybe the cold is uh, i saw you guys in concert so this is october 29th 2005, I saw you in Montreal, Quebec at Metropolis with Default. Default was opening for you guys. And I have two questions uh, that have to do with performing live from fans that mm. kind of work together. So the first question from Tyler Palinkas is, what was your favorite Stain song to play live? And then the yin to the yang, the opposite is Stacey Evans wants to know, is there a song you hated to play live? So favorite same song, and then maybe a song you hated to play live. Oh man, favorite song. We're giving the people what they want here. I would say something off of Dysfunction probably was my favorite. Um, uh, a flat was always fun to play for me. Um, oh man, Suffocate. It's just just because they rock so hard, you know. You know, it's just fun to dig in like that. And then, you know. Um, Maybe there's uh, a song that doesn't showcase much on the drums. It's kind of boring. Like you just have to go through the motions. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, you're talking about the one that I, I prefer not to play. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, uh maybe a song like Epiphany where you're kind of in there, but oh, in the yeah. background. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was still it was still okay. I mean, it gave me a little break first of all, <laughs> and uh, you know, so I, I mean, no, there really isn't one that I didn't, you know, that I dreaded playing. So that's a good answer. We'll we'll go with that. 